In this video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for measures of location. So what we're going to do here is take a look at three exam style questions for measures of location. As always, pause the video, have a look at the questions as they appear, and then double check that your solution matches what we get on the screen. Other than that though, I think that's everything that we need here to get started. So let's begin now with question one. So I know for question one then we're told the heights h centimeters of eight students are measured. The summary data for the heights is given as follows. We've got sigma h here and sigma h squared. We've got two parts of this question, so let's begin with part a. So for part a then, all I want to do here is work out the mean height of the eight students. So the mean height here, that would be h bar. And the way that we evaluate h bar here is by taking sigma h and dividing that by n, our sample size. We've got sigma h divided by n. Okay, sigma h, we're given that, that's 1310. And then we divide that by n here, which in this question is a. Our sample size is the eight students. We divide it by a. All you need to do here now is just use your calculator to evaluate this fraction. If you do this correctly, what you should find then is we get 163.75. Okay, so 163.75 centimeters there. So hopefully nice and straightforward there for the first part. What about part B then? Well, pretty similar. All we want to do now is work out the standard deviation of the height of the eight students. So the standard deviation, well, this result is given in the formula, but you don't have to worry about memorizing this. So S is equal. So this is the square root. So it's the square root of sigma h squared divided by n, and then we subtract the mean squared. So minus h bar squared. Okay. And we take the square root of all of this. Okay, so sigma h squared, we're given that here. So in this case, then s is equal to the square root. I've got 215054. That's all over n here, which again, is just a. It's just the same as what we had in part a. We divide it by a, and then we subtract the mean squared. So the mean here is what we evaluated in part a. So that was 163.75. So minus 163.75 squared there. Okay. So what you need to do here is just put this into your calculator then. So therefore S is equal. So again, just put this into your calculator here. And if you do this correctly, if I run this to say one decimal place here, what I get then for the standard deviation of the height of the eight students is 8.2 centimeters there. Okay. And there we have it, so that's the solution there to question one. Moving on to question two then, we were told that a teacher records a number of our students been revising for their upcoming mock exams using the school's online learning platform. The results are then summarized in the table below. So we can see the results here given in this table. So the question says, using linear interpolation, find an estimate for the median number of hours spent revising. So where do we begin here then for question two? But well, we need to know which value the median would be. So to find that, we simply sum the frequencies here and divide that by 2. If you add these values here, what you'll find is we have 58 values. So it's 58 students here. So if we divide that by 2 then, the median here would be the 29th value. So the median is equal to the 29th value. So the 29th value here. Okay. So which class interval would that fall into? Well, if we consider the cumulative frequencies here, I've got four plus a 10, then, so that's 14. So it doesn't fall into this class interval here. So we keep going. I've got 14 plus 18, so that's 32. So what that tells us then is the median must fall within this class interval here. Okay, so median lies within 11 to 15. So let's just write that down. So medium lies within. 11 to 15. Okay. So what we're going to do now is draw our scale here. Like so. So we're using interpolation here. So we need our scale. We're finding the media. So that's Q2. So at some point between these two points here, we have the median. Let's say it's here, Q2. Okay. Now, what I've got here is this data. And if we notice, these class intervals don't join. Okay. So I've got 1 to 5. 6 to 10, 11 to 15, so on and so on. So we do need the class boundaries here, okay? So 
So my lower class boundary here, well, it's for 11 to 15, so the lower class boundary would be 10.5. We've got 10.5 there, and then for the upper class boundary here, that would be 15.5. Okay, so we've got 15.5 for the upper class boundary. Um, the Q2, let me just do that above, actually. I think it'll look a little bit neat if I do it above. So then we've got Q2 here. So that's the median, Q2. So then let's consider the values at these points. So... 10.5, well, up to that point, so that's my lower class boundary, we've got 4 plus 10, so that's the 14th value, so that's 14. And then for the upper class boundary here, well, that's at the end of this class interval here, so 4 plus 10 is the 14 that we've just got, plus the 18, that gives us 32 there. Okay, and the Q2, well, like we said, that's the 29th value, so underneath we'll put 29 there. Perfect, so we've got everything that we need here now to find the median number of hours spent revising. So we set up our equations here. What do we have? I've got Q2 minus 10.5. So Q2 minus 10.5. And that's all over. So we've got 15.5 minus 10.5. Like so. And this is equal then. And we just do the same here now with the numbers underneath the values here. So I've got 29 minus 14. And that's all over 32 minus 14. Okay. So from here, it's just a matter of simplifying and then going on to solve for Q2, which is our median here that we want to find. So 15.5 minus 10.5, well, that would be 5. So we've got Q2 minus 10.5. That's over 5. And that is equal then. Well, 29 minus 14, that's 15. 32 minus 14 is 18, so this is equal to 15 over 18. So all I need to do now is times through by 5, that will get rid of this fraction here. So if I do it underneath, Q2 minus 10.5 is equal to 5 lots of 15 over 18. So 5 times 15 over 18. And then finally, we just want Q2 here. I just need to add 10.5 to both sides. Okay, so therefore, Q2 is equal then to 10.5, 10.5 plus, 10.5 plus 5 times 15 over 18. Like so. All you need to do now is just put this into your calculator here. And if I round my answer to say one decimal place here, what I get then is 14.7 there. Okay, so the median number of hours spent revising is 14.7 hours there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution there to question two. And finally then, if we just take a look now at the very last question here, question three, we were told that a random sample of 40 plants is taken. The height h centimeters of the plants is recorded and presented in the table below. So we see the results here given in this table. Now we've got three parts to this question, so let's begin with part A. So for part A then, it just simply says, write down the modal class for the heights of the plants. So hopefully this isn't too challenging, we're just looking for the modal class, that's just asking us then, which class interval here has the largest respective frequency? So if we look at the frequencies here, I've got A, 14, 12, and six. Well, clearly 14 is the largest of those values, and that corresponds to 40 to 50. Okay, so the modal class then would be that class interval. So the modal class is given as 40 to 50. Like so, and there we have it. So that's the solution to part A, hopefully nice and straightforward. So for part B then, Again, nothing too challenging here. It just says find an estimate for the mean height of the plants. So what we're looking for here is X bar. So for the mean height of these plants here. So the first thing that we need here to find an estimate for the mean height of the plants is the midpoint for these class intervals. So if we've got 20 to 40, the midpoint would be 30. If we have 40 to 50, that would be 45. 50 to 6, that would be 55. And then finally, 60 to 80, that would be 70. Okay. 
And what I need to do now is take these midpoints here and multiply those by their respective frequencies. So for example, 30 times 8, 45 times 14, 55 times 12, and then finally 70 times 6. Okay, so what we're going to do is add all those products together. So I've got 30 times 8 plus, so what do we have next? Well, I've got 45 times 14. So 45 times 14, we've then got 55 times 12. And then finally here, we've got 70 times 6. Okay. And what I do here now is I divide this by the total sample size, which in this case is 40. So we divide this here by 40, like so. So we need to do here is just clearly put this into our calculator. So x bar, or well the numerator this evaluates to be 1950. So we then divide this by 40. And again, just put this into your calculator here. So 1950 divided by 40, and this gives us 48.75 there. Okay. And we're talking about the mean height here, and we're working in centimetres, so that's 48.75 centimetres there. Okay, so there we have it, so that's the solution to part B. And then finally for part C here, it just says, using linear interpolation, find an estimate for the median height. So we're looking for the median then. So the first thing to consider here is which value corresponds to the median. Well, if we're working with 40 values, the median would be the 20th value. So that's the 20th value, okay, the 20th value, and what class interval does that correspond to then? Well, I've got 20 to 40 here, which is a frequency of A, so now we consider the cumulative frequency as we go. So for the next class interval then, we've got 14 as the frequency, so the cumulative frequency would be 8 plus 14, so that would give us 22 there. So clearly then, the median must fall within this class interval here because 20 is less than 22. So therefore, the median lies within... So the median lies within this class interval here. That's just what we're looking to find to begin with. So that's 40 to 50. Like so. Then what we're going to do here is draw our scale here. I've got my two points, like so. We've got the median here somewhere in the middle, let's say here. Okay, so that's Q2, that's the medium. Now, if we look at the class intervals here, notice there's no gaps between each class interval. So it's 20 to 40, then the next one is 40 to 50, the next one is then 50 to 60, and then finally 60 to 80. So what that tells us then is we don't actually need the class boundaries here. Okay. So my lower class boundary is just 40, my lower class um, interval here, I guess, 40. Then we've got the upper bound here, which is 50. Okay. And then let's consider the values at these respective points. So Q2, well, that's the 20th value. Okay, so that's the 20th value. Before this point here, okay, before this class interval, I should say, we have a frequency of 8, so that corresponds to this lower class boundary here of 40. So that's 8 there. And then what about the upper value here? Well, 8 plus 14 is 22. Okay, so that's 22 there. Now what we do here is we set up our equations. And let me do this over here on the left-hand side. We've got Q2. So Q2 minus 40. And that's all over. I've got 50 minus 40 there. And that is equal then. And we just do the same here now with the numbers underneath. So I've got 20 minus 8. And that's all over 22 minus 8. Okay. Well, this denominator here simplifies to 10. So I've got Q2 minus 40. That's all over 10. And that is equal then. So 20 minus 8 is um, 12 here, 22 minus 8 is 14, so that's 12 over 14. Okay, I want to run out of room here, so let me do it over here. 
So what I've got then is Q2 minus 5 is equal to 10 times 12 over 14. Like so. And then finally, Q2 is equal to 40 plus this here. So 40 plus 10 times 12 over 14. Let me just put this in a bracket just to make it look a little bit neater. Like so. And again, if we just give our answer here to a sensible degree of accuracy. Let's say again, one decimal place here. What I get then is 48.6 here. So we get 48.6 centimeters there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to part C. And that gives the solution there to the very last question, question three. And that brings the end of this video on exam revision for measures of location.